Hey there. So this week we're going to start talking about our um, hydrologic processes, the processes that are in the hydrologic cycle. And the first one we're going to do is precipitation. And this should be fairly straightforward, right? We'll see how it goes. So in this first lecture, I'm going to talk about what is precipitation, the types of precipitation, and how precipitation is um, can be applied to watershed management. And I, I think that'll be more clear the more we learn about precipitation. So precipitation is water, liquid or solid, that falls from clouds in the atmosphere. And I hope that's something you learned earlier in your schooling. We know about rain. Rain is large droplets. It's usually um, 0.5 millimeters to up to six millimeters. So they can be fairly big. Drizzle is smaller, um, less than 0.5 millimeters. And in our area, we should be a little bit familiar with drizzle and especially fog. And that's um, water droplets that are going to be at the ground level. And they'll also be fairly small. So that's our liquid precipitation. And now our frozen precipitation, we have snow, just a little bit of snow. Orse Mountain gets snow, maybe Neelan gets snow. Um, but those are ice crystals that form from freezing raindrops. So you have to have uh, really cold conditions to get snow. Ice uh, or sleet is going to be um, ice pellets. So it might start off as liquid and then go through a cold layer as it's coming to the ground. And so it comes like a hard rain and it, it'll be um, smaller than hail and um, be sleet. So hail is going to be ice balls, usually come from um, large storms um, uh, where you have a lot of uh, wind and maybe you have those ice crystals moving around. Um, they move and they form into balls and then they fall to the earth. So that's a little bit about precipitation. We're going to go into a lot more detail later, but I want to talk about um, why precipitation is um, applicable to watershed management. It is the major input of water into a watershed. And if you're living in a watershed or using the land in the watershed, you want to know how much precipitation is going to be there and the timing. When is it going to be there? How much is going to come during a period of time and the quality of the water? Um, in some parts of the world, um, the water coming down due to industrial um, pollution may have more pollutants in it or acids in it, things that will affect your watershed. So those are the kinds of things you want to be concerned about when you think about precipitation in your watershed. The annual amount of precipitation is going to really um, affect you. You want to know when there's the highs, when the lows, when you're having a drought. Um, that's going to affect whether people are going to have water um, and how they're going to use water in their watershed, especially if they're growing crops or using um, water for some other industrial use. Those are just things that you have to figure out. And you have to think about what land practices or land uses are happening in your watershed because that can imp impact how much of that precipitation is going to hit the ground and eventually flow into the stream. And that's where precipitation is really most important is the stream flow, because that's where everything is moving in the watershed. Um, we haven't talked too much about stream flow, but that's the flow of the rivers and streams. And it's what's moving everything through the watershed, it, even things that you can't see. And, and large watersheds like the Mississippi, you have the boats going down, but you also have sediments and nutrients and um, seeds, things that um, affect your ecosystem in the watershed. So that's um, what makes precipitation an important thing to study, and it, we could study a lot of it. I want to give you an example of um, how precipitation may affect a watershed based on recent events in California. We have all these wildfires, and these wildfires are going to impact the vegetation and the soils in watershed. Um, we're losing vegetation, and those soils can be altered so that um, water may not move into those uh, soils. And um, if the soil is bare and water is moving in there, there's the risk of what we call debris slides, where all the material that's been burned is on the ground. All that's going to just flow down hill and um, could affect residents. Uh, a double tragedy, really, when you think about it, a double um, 
hit there if they get debris slides in their towns from a winter storm. So yeah, when the precipitation will hit a bare soil, you can have runoff and lose more soil or it can infiltrate and then you'll have water running off. So in terms of watershed management in those watersheds where you've had these um, fires, um, land managers right now might be thinking of ways to mitigate or um, delay the impacts of that water coming down or stop those debris slides by maybe planting seeds or something that maybe might grow quickly because we don't have much time that are going to hold the soil in place or build berms or use the logs that um, are burned or the trees that are burned and have those logs sit in place to hold material so that it doesn't all fall away. They can also add mulch and um, that can absorb the water um, and, and keep the soil intact. So those are just things to think about in terms of precipitation and watersheds. So let me just summarize this quick introduction. Precipitation is water. I'm going to move myself out of the way a little bit here. Is water either liquid or solid that's falling from the atmosphere? Types of precipitation are rain, drizzle, fog, snow, sleet, or hail. And the amount and timing and quality of the water will impact watersheds. And those are just things to think about. I didn't even think about with the wildfires too. All that smoke went into um, our recent rain system that came down onto our soils. So that's another thing to think about. Um, people, plants, and animals are all imp impacted by the amount of water and the and the water that flows in a watershed, how much and, and whether how little. All right, um, that's your introduction. And we're going to move on and talk about the details of the process of precipitation in the next lectures. Take care.